This week in VCT, we now have our grand finalists now announced for the Essential Pacific Tournament. Some interesting rumors regarding Crew or 100 Thieves, and I'm calling it right now. Carmine Call or Team Vitality are winning champs. So let's now get into now the rumor mill that's been happening throughout this week. And for our start with 100 Thieves, Xander. This is from VLR Juan IRLV, basically from VLR. Um, I'm not too sure how credible this is, I'll be honest, but uh, there was rumors that potentially Xander might be going to Sentinels. Not too sure that's going to be true. Um, I think I've also seen as well that um, Bang might be joining uh, Sentinels as well if Xander doesn't get picked up and stuff. So I guess it's a bit of a trade there, I'll be honest, of like who's going to get Xander. So And whoever doesn't get Xander will get Bang. Um, so, I mean, that's fine by me, I'll be honest. I think this is a great pickup, though, for 100 Thieves, considering that they struggled a bit last year. Like, yes, they made it to Master Shanghai, but they didn't make it to any other international event, and they've been kind of, like, top five, at least. So, it was also, it was also a very, very good team, a very good year for 100 Thieves, but considering that they only made it to one international event last year, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess you can say maybe it was a bit disappointing considering they had like the likes of like Asuna, Cryocells, Boostio as well, EU, Bang as your roster. So I guess there was some hype around this team, but considering what, but considering what happened last year, it makes sense. Um, but either way, still an all right, still a pretty good pickup if this is true though. For, for 100 Thieves. Next up is G2 Jogmo. This is from Alejandro, I believe. Uh, this is good, I'll be honest. And we will, and we will be talking about G2 later on this video. Uh, having Jogmo in is great. I swear Jogmo has been rumored to be going G2 beforehand, I think. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he was rumored to, to, to be going to G2, I think, at the start of this year, I believe. But if he does join, I think this is great. Um, it would be a great pickup. As a duelist player, I thought Icy was very, very good still. He was he did impress me, especially in Master Shanghai. He was very, very, very good. Um, but I guess you maybe might need some other changes. Like maybe you can maybe maybe make more changes into the roster. But I think having Jogmo in is still a very good pickup in my opinion. Um, to replace Icy. So I'll be honest. 10 out of 10 pickup, I quite like it. This rumor is from Bruno Povolari. I hope I said his name correctly. And it is Aspas leaving Leviathan. Now, I am not surprised, I'll be honest. I think, like, by what we've seen of the atmosphere um, and just how the team really was, you could just tell that Aspas was just not really enjoying it. And also, I think before the season was started, they kick Nosware out and they replace him with Com. And I think the only reason why um, Aspas joined Lev was to play with Nosware. And he didn't get that, obviously. And Lev as a whole this year was very, very disappointing and extremely underwhelming, especially in Shanghai, where they just looked out of place. Champs, they were all right. I mean, they didn't make it to the grand final, obviously, but I mean, they still got top three, I believe, which is still pretty good for this team. But considering that this was the powerhouse team of the Americas region, and everyone expected them to be dominant and to win champs, possibly as well, of, I guess, of their roster, it's disappointing, I'll be honest. Very, very disappointing of, of this entire team. So I can understand why Aspas would leave, but the question is, where does he go? I haven't heard any rumors of where, of where he could go. So it is very much up in the air of what his career will be looking like. Next rumor is from Lembo, and this is Crew Adverso. Now, interestingly enough, Adverso used to play for Love Your Time during 2022, I believe, so before franchising. Uh, he was down to All Knights in the Latin America South region. Obviously, All Knights impressed us a lot. Got, in, got into the top three, I believe, top four somewhere. Um, and now he's potentially been picked up now by Crew Esports. And I quite like it. He's a veteran player. He's been around the scene for a very, very long time. He has competed in, in Tier 1 before. Yes, against the other Latin American team. But I still really, really like this change. I think this is a great change in my opinion. So I'm very excited um, if this does come true. 
Now, this rumor is from an inside source from Liquipedia, and, and it is Wolves Fade, the former coach of XLG Esports, who is now in the Ascension, who, who is now in Tier 1 China now, after their win in Ascension. I also like this change, and I think it was much, much needed. Wolves, this year, was terrible. I mean, I think I like. Yes, they tried to make some changes at the very tail end of the season to say shoot by adding um she fat baby in as the IGL, which I like. I really, really like that change. But the coaching itself was just not up to standards. I mean, I'm sorry. The coaches were just pretty crap in my opinion. And having a really good coach of Fade who has coached um teams like Team Secret, I believe now as well XLG. This is great, and it's a good sign for Wolves in the future, for that if they do want to, you know, be competitive and stuff. Um, and I'm not too sure what rumors are going to be oh, swirling around for, for Wolves other than Fade joining this team, but I'll be interested to see of what roster they cook up, because having Fade as a coach is very, very good, and I think they will do well when they have some good players in this team. Next up is from Alejandro, and remember when I said that I think Carmichael or Team Vitality are going to be winning, like, are, are going to be winning champs? What is what I mean? Carmichael, Rumors, Sigetsu, and Elite. I already talked about Avis and Sardark potentially joining Carmichael, and now adding Sigetsu and Elite into the lineup. I'm sorry, this, is, this team is going to be difficult to beat. <laughs> like, I mean... Two players that have won international events to get to inside up, having young players like Elite and Avis and Martin as well in the lineup, Aang and Zeich as the coaches, that is just a pure recipe of just the best team in the world. And it would be great if Carmine Core does make it to the grand final in Champions Paris. Obviously, I, can, I, I just know that the French fans will be going crazy for that. And I hope it happens because this team is looking so, so good right now. I obviously we don't know if it's if it's gonna be true, but it's looking good. But it's looking so good so far that I think that this Carmen Core team, as what we've seen so far, might be contenders and might even be and might even challenge like so like Fnatic, Navi, Team Heretics, even maybe not really legally Navi, but I mean from what I've but but well, I mean. From the rumors that I've seen from Na'Vi, it's looking pretty good for them. But Carmichael, they are looking so good and potentially might even win the whole thing. Next one, another one from Alejandro, and, and it is Gentlemates Mini, the former player, or maybe I should say current player for Go Next Esports. The team that I thought that they were going to be in the grand final for Ascension EMEA uh, kind of flopped. Um, but either way, I mean... Mini being picked up is a great, great choice. I think Gentleman as a whole needed a new re like a basically entire rehaul of, of their roster. So having like Robbie BK Ferris, having Gook as a head coach is great. You could keep some of the French players. I think Cadaver was very, very impressive. Uh, I don't know about Bay is. I think Bay is might be replaced by by Robbie BK. You can maybe even keep Takas, I believe. I, th I thought Takas was very, very impressive. So you can definitely keep some some of the French talent in, um, in Gentlemates. But having sim like having like other players like Robbie BK, like Mini as well in in the lineup is a very, very good showing right so far for Gentlemates. But from I I expect this team to maybe midfield at best. Um, I don't think they're going to be contenders, in my opinion. I think they're definitely going to be midfielders. Um, from just what I've seen from, from other teams, Carmine Core, Fnatic, Navi, Team Vitality pretty soon as well, we, um, as as um, we, will, we will be talking about. But Gentlemates, so far, I think will definitely improve from, uh, for, I should say, from this year. And a final EMEA rumor is another one from Alejandro, and it's Team Vitality less. This um came out of the blue. I was not expecting this at all. That less potentially will be going to EMEA along with Sardak. Uh, but like what? <laughs> Imagine a team with safe and less in the lineup and a pot and potentially Dirk as well. I think I've seen a couple of rumors that Dirk might be joining um Team Vitality, but it's looking like it's potentially more going to be leaving in against Navi. But I mean Vitality with less. This is great. And I think Kicks and Safe might be staying. I don't think Sender is going to be staying. Nor maybe Runner. I'm not too sure about Runner, actually. Runner is an interesting case. Um, but 
if Les does join Vitality, ooh, Vitality are going to be in our top four team, in my opinion. And the final rumor is T1 Silver from Tanmay. I, sure. <laughs> sure, that's what I'll say. I think the rumor is that Sylvan might be replacing X-Grid, which does not make sense to me whatsoever. I thought X-Grid was a phenomenal player last year. And I think he's also learning Korean for this as well. And that would be, uh, yeah, that would not matter. Uh, I, that would not matter whatsoever, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, but I, such a weird thing, Sylvan joining T1. He was with Gen G for a bit, and then he left. Um, I was, it was a very underwhelming performance from him. I would have thought that Ten Ten would be would be announced as a rumor, but not yet apparently. Um, but I mean, Sylvan is still an all right player, in my opinion. I just don't like that that he's being that he's replacing Excret because I think Excret is a better player than Sylvan, but. To be fair, Sylvan, I mean, he's, he, it was a very underwhelming performance in Gen G, but to be fair, that entire uh, Gen G team was underperforming. Um, I, so I think now with the T1 team, which are looking like to be going to now fully Korean stacks, looking like to be returning to the IGO role, I mean, this team might be really, really good, but I'm not too sure, I'll be honest. Moving now to the news throughout the week, and it's just three quick things. First off, IC has left G2. I guess this may be the most surprising one, in my opinion. I really, really thought that G2 was going to potentially keep their entire roster, make maybe one or two changes, maybe to the Kuchu South, or maybe to one of the players as well. But IC? Really? I mean, I get it that he joined midway for G2 to, to replace Net, but I thought this team was pretty good with icy and i mean they made it to master shanghai they made it the champs like what that doesn't make sense to me like i thought that they were just going to keep icy for long term but apparently not but at least icy made a name for himself and he might maybe he might maybe be looked at for another opportunities um in vct tier one if not maybe tier two but I think it'd be such a waste of potential for him to be wait to, to be in tier two, in my opinion. I think he should be in tier one. Maybe not really like a star studded team. Maybe like a midfield team, e.g., uh, potentially. But I'm not too sure. I mean, this kind of took me out of surprise, to be honest. I thought that IC was gonna stay, but apparently not. And now that now that Jogmo is rumored to be joining G2, I think we know who Jogmo is gonna be replacing. And the last two are just restricted free agents. First up with Nosware, he's now a restricted free agent for Furia. I'm not surprised by this whatsoever. Nosware, he was very vocal and adamant on this team. I think there was like a, a video that was posted that Nosware was just ripping into these players, which absolutely makes sense. I mean, Nosware was wasted in that Furia team last year. I'm just going to say it. Oh, so say this year, I should say. I'm just saying it because... Nosware is actually a very, very good player. And yes, he was in a struggling crew, but he was a part of Ninja's Pajamas, I believe. He was part of Leviathan, I think, for a bit as well. And both of those teams are very, very good. I think Nip, I think he was when I think he was in that team. They made it to 2022 Masters Reykjavik, um, I believe. And I think he's also part of Le uh, and he obviously he, the biggest one was that he was part of, uh, he was part of Leviathan. Where Aspas wanted to play with him, but Leviathan said, nope, we're kicking you out. Why? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Uh, I think I've seen that Nozwe might be going to crew esports potentially. Um, like, crew are still weighing their options if they want either Heat or Nozwe. I, 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 I would take Nozwe. I, I, I love Heat, I'll be honest. I, I, think Heat, I think Heat is a phenomenal player. But if you maybe want stability and leadership... I think maybe Nosware is the better choice in my opinion, but I guess if you want a, a scrappy young player um, who can basically play anything, put Heat in. But I mean, it's just weighing up options, I'll be honest, for Korea Esports. And the final one is Pora. He is a restricted free agent for BBL. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to feel about this. I think Pora was alright for BBL. Uh... I mean, would BBL would rather have another Turkish IGL potentially? I mean, they are already looking at potential players uh, for this team. So I guess might be the best opportunity for Pora to look for other opportunities. But where could he go? I don't think Foot really wants him because they already have added captain. 
You could maybe go to another team. Like, I don't know. I can't even think of any team, I'll be honest. Um, I don't... Giant X? <laughs> maybe Giant X, Koi even. Uh, if you really want to go, I guess... I guess semi international in the uh, in EMEA, but I don't know where Pora could go. The best option for him is maybe go back down to tier two in Turkey. I mean, you could. I mean, he could easily join Pacific Esports to get him second place against, against Apex, maybe S two G. Uh, which I was, I think he was with earlier. You can maybe go to Cyber Wildcats if you, if you really want to, but I don't know where Pora could go. I'll be honest, I got nothing let's now talk about pacific ascension first up with revenant esports as they play two games against rapid lo-fi and disguise they won against rapid lo-fi but lost against disguise dos knight and sultan were my mvps yes yes the kazakhstan duo placing seventh through eighth uh i don't know i, I don't know how i feel about this i i mean i guess you can say they were around my expectations i wasn't expecting them to be Top five or may or even in the grand final, in my opinion. I thought it could be just all right, and I guess you, I guess, I mean, they kind of underperformed for my expectations. I thought it could be fifth through six at least, but for them to, I mean, at least they beat a rapid low five, which is a good sign. But I mean, the, the disguised. Uh, the scene was a bit shocking, I'll be honest, but at least Revenant showed some good promises. I mean, I think um, definitely DOS9 and Sultan were were very, very impressive, especially Sultan, who I knew nothing about coming into this event, and he just came out of the water and just popped off in his first ever game. Um, but, I mean, every, every, like, everyone else, I think Paradox, SK Rossi even, they were um, kind of nowhere, in my opinion. I think Trick as well as the sub, I mean, I don't think he even played at all. I, I, I don't think. I can't remember who the other player. I think the skills, I believe, also kind of nowhere. So I would not be surprised if Revenant Esports does keep that roster coming to uh, coming to split three. Um, but it's just it was a pretty it was a bit of, it was a bit of a disappointing result for for for, for Revenant Esports. A very much not disappointing result for Full Sense as they played three games against against JFT. Uh, Simpraza Gaming and Boom Esports. They won against JFT, but lost against Simpraza and Boom. PTC, Leviathan, and Sushi Boys were my MVPs, placing third. Uh, it was still a very, very good performance, I'll be honest, from full, from full sense. I was very, very, I was very, very impressed with this entire team. I think Talent Esports should definitely be looking at some of these players. John Olsen, especially. Uh, Sushi Boys as well. Um, PTC, Leviathan. Quite a lot of these players could easily be in tier one by now, but apparently not. Uh, I will not, yeah. So I won't be surprised if you know some of these players do get picked up because I think that these players are very, very good, and they showed it. I mean, they showed it that they are amazing. Um, uh, in in Ascension, but I don't know if that's ever gonna happen. Considering that it, I mean, Full Sense just loves John Olsen. I don't think they're going. I think they're going to put him a massive buyout if anyone wants John Olsen. As for everyone else, I mean, there's definitely potential that they could maybe move to tier one, but I'm not too sure. But either way, it was a very, very good, a good performance from Full Sense. I can't say the same for Rapid Low Fly as they only really played one game against Reverend Esports and Lost Prodigy was my MVP, placing ninth through tenth. Yeah, I mean, like I said in my Teams and Players video, no one had any expectations for this team. If it was Fantasy United Esports, eh, maybe a bit more expectations, but I still think they would not be competitive. Uh, like, Rapper Lo-Fi was in this weird situation where there were the underdogs coming into this event and no one had them circled to even be part of this event and they somehow made it. Like, it's a weird situation there that... No one, like, n like no one has anything on this team, but everyone kind of knew that they were going to struggle and just flop. And that's basically what happened. They kind of flopped, and, like, they were, and they were, and plus, they were around my expectations. They were not competitive. I thought that, 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 that they were going to be out immediately, and they were. Um, but, I mean, it was still an alright showing from Rapper Lo-Fi, but it's, I mean, it doesn't really matter considering that they were, that they bombed out immediately from this tournament. Disguised. They played two games against Boom and Revenant. They won against Revenant but lost against Boom. Grumble and Juicy were my MVPs, placing fifth through sixth. The last year's, the, basically our last year's region winners, uh, placing fifth through sixth. Not a good showing, I'll be honest, from this team. 
like you could say that the skies maybe maybe doesn't deserve to be there but i mean they were like a top three at best uh, i'll be honest in every tournament that they played in that region like you can maybe say that like elevate deserve to be there more than the skies but same time elevate like join pre late into 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 major singapore and the skies are much more well-known team we'll say they are very very well known um but it was it was a pretty disappointing result i'll be honest from this entire team uh, definitely i mean there were i mean i'll say this there were some good showings from this team juicy especially grumble also has some great moments as well um i think vera also has some decent moments as well from this team but it doesn't really matter. I mean, I don't really think these players are going to be picked up. I think maybe Juicy is the, is the most likely one, considering that everyone else from his Bleed team left. Um, I mean, continued with Bleed while Juicy did it because he wasn't 18. So maybe Juicy might maybe be looked at, but I don't think so. One of two finalists for Ascension, that being Sin Praza game. And as they played two games against Boom Esports and Full Sense, and they won both of them. Persia and Danby were my MVPs. I'm calling it right now. This is my prediction. Sin Praza game are oh, winning against Boom Esports. Yes, in front of Boom Esports home crowd. I mean, this team has been so dominant in this entire tournament. They're basically Apex in Pacific, in Korea. And having another South Korean team, I think, will definitely do worse, I'll be honest. And with star players like Perugia and Danby especially, Ivy had some decent mar uh, moments. Margaret, who's a veteran of, um, in, this in, in this scene. I'm being serious. This team is so good. And they deserve to be in Tier 1. If they don't make it a Tier 1, I think some of the players deserve to be in Tier 1. Perugia and Danby are definitely one, in my opinion. So, if they don't make it to Tier 1, yes, it'll be a bit disappointing. But, in my opinion, some of these players deserve to be there. Next up is Riddle, as they played three games against Nals, JFT, and Boom. They won against Nals and JFT, but lost against Boom. Kaide and Solden were my MVPs, placing fourth. And all right, showing from Riddle, I'll be honest, I think this is a very, very good showing from this team. I think play, I think teams might be looking at some of these players, like Kaide, who... I think was part of Save Division, pretty sure, at one point. I think during an, an off-season event and was very, very impressive. He was very, very, very good. Um, Soldam, he has been in the scene for a while. Obviously, he played for DFM in that shocking roster that they had. Uh, I mean, you could maybe look at maybe JoJo or Ace, maybe. But I think that I don't know, I'll be honest, of, of, of who they could pick up. Because uh, here's the thing. I don't know the rumors that's been happening around the Japanese scene. All I know is that DFM have announced that May will be keep will be joining still with this team. That's all I know. I don't know anything else about Kaide potentially joining either DFM or Zay Division. I would not be surprised if he joins Zay Division considering that he has been around that team before. Could JoJo maybe join Tier 1? I don't think so. Could Soul Dan maybe make a return? Potentially. But I'm not too sure, I'll be honest, on this entire roster, if they could even make it into um, Tier 1. But Riddle as a whole is very popular in Japan. Um, but I think, I, I still think they had a very, very good, a very, very good performance though in this, in this tournament. They just need to work on some things, obviously. Another team which brought out pretty early was Oblivion Force, the Hong Kong team. They lost against Nalsi Sports. Coconut was my MVP, placing 9th through 10th. Just like Rapper Lo-Fi. I mean, it's not surprising. Like, even if one team, the Taiwan team, was there, still 9th through 10th, in my opinion. They might maybe be a bit better than, than Oblivion Force, but it still doesn't change the fact that still 9th through 10th is 9th through 10th. I mean, it was some decent moments on Oblivion Force. That's all. I don't think they could... I mean, you can maybe look at these players maybe for China, but I don't know if any of these players really wants to relocate to China. Uh, but I'm... I obviously... I don't know. I'm not obviously... I'm not an insider. I'm just reporting on stuff. Um, but Oblivion Falls of the whole this tournament, not surprising. It's kind of where I expected them to be. But the very, very disappointing result for Nals Esports. They played two games against against Oblivion Force and Riddle. They won against Oblivion Force, but lost against Riddle. Mosher and Papa Chula were my MVPs, placing 7th through 8th. No one had that, I, I, I bet, in their bingo card for this tournament. I was expecting them to be at least top 5, maybe even, in, maybe even top 4. 
Like this team has some star players. Papa Chulo is, is one of them. Ja, Mojo, Iman. Like there were some great like there are some great players on this team. It's just that they just flopped. They were just so disappointing of this team. Like I'm just disappointed as a whole. Because where this team was last year, they came third through four. A very, very good result for the Filipino team. But here, they um they were just bad. They were just awful. I mean, you can maybe say that there were better teams in this tournament. Riddle, Boom, Sin Browser Gaming, Full Sands. You can definitely say that, but some of these teams, like JFT, as, as um, we will be talking about, I think Nows could easily be JFT. It's just that it was just a bracket thing, you know? It was just the bracket is just shite. Um, like, that is definitely a potential reason why Nows would struggle here, because the bracket was just not in their favor. So I can understand that reasoning, but it doesn't really show that this team was just kind of shaky in this tournament. And the other grand finalist is Boom Esports as they played four games against Simpaz Game in Disguise, Riddle, and Full Sense. They won against Disguise, Riddle, and Full Sense, but lost against Simpazer. Berserx, Shiro, and Famous were my MVPs. They seem have been impressive. I mean, I am really really impressed with this entire team and playing zone in front of the home crowd is amazing i just want to say this the home crowd of, of indonesia amazing i mean they have this little chant thing as well i think like during timeout where i think it was like an announcer or like some speaker said boo meat sports and they just kept like clapping like the clap six or something it was amazing like the energy in that in that um in that uh, arena was phenomenal for boo meat sports so I think Boom Esports would definitely give Simpraz Gaming a run for their money. They have played against each other before, so I could definitely see that. But considering of how dominant Simpraz Gaming has been, I think Boom I think Boom I think Boom Esports might falter. But I still think this game will be extremely competitive. And the final team is JFT Esports as they played two games against Full Sense and Riddle and they lost both of them. Ikana and Murza were my MVPs, placing 5th through 6th. It was a very good result for the Oceania team, but at the same time, other than now Esports, which the bracket kind of, kind of fucked them over, a bracket for JFT Esports actually benefited them. I mean, they, they didn't get to play these play like these, these teams like, like the Skies or now where, in my opinion, as a, even as an Oceania person, uh, easily those two teams would beat JFT Esports. So the, it's this weird thing where the bracket would not work for some teams, but it will work wonders for other teams. And JFT were one of those teams that worked amazing for them. Like, they didn't get to play some of these teams like, like you know, like Boom, like Simpaz Gaming, like Naus, where easily they could be beaten straight like, straight, straight like that. Um, but placing 5th or 6th is a pretty good result for JFT, um, in the Oceania region. I think that's also where Bonkers plays as well, I believe. So, I mean, they basically are right there with Bonkers in the, in the international stage. But at the same time, JFT were kind of given the Lord's name, I'll be honest, in, uh, for this bracket. I mean, this bracket definitely helped them out. But it was still a very, very good result for, for JFT. And we'll see if the entire Shannon region can catch up to them. So that's really about it for me for this for this episode of, of this week in VCT. Now like and I guys to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps, especially on this channel. And I'll catch you guys all later in the next one. Have a good day, everyone. Goodbye.